Thank you. Thank you, Tina. That was far too generous uh, an introduction. Um, and it's, it's simply wonderful to be here, to be back uh, in this space. Um, facing, you're going to see, that it's only going to be faces. Uh, I'm, I'm giving, up the, uh, giving up the ghost right now, uh, giving, up the, giving the hint right now what the, the slides are going to be. Um, I sincerely mean that it's great to be back uh, in this space. Uh, thank you for the land acknowledgement, uh, critically important. Uh, as we move uh, as we move forward, and to understand why we make them, and and so I echo that now from the private sector, and I think I think it's 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 critical, and I thank you that you, and that and that you contextualized it, did it so well. So many familiar faces from my past lives, uh, from different places and different countries, and it's 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 great to be back and and in touch with with all of you. Um, I've appreciated, I've appreciated the time I've spent in government. I love being an academic. Uh, I loved, uh, I love teaching. I still love teaching. I'm still going to continue to teach. I love the research and writing. But I have appreciated the time I've spent in government and the opportunity that that, that presents, uh, whether as a parliamentary secretary or, or whether as a minister. They're, they're different roles. And as an MP. And they're all important roles. And I. I won't, um, I won't bore you with, with, uh, with sentiment, but it, it was critically, critically important, I think, to have had that experience for me, and, and I appreciated every moment of it. There are downsides, and we talked about it a bit in the last panel, um, and especially in the age of social media, um, and, it is, and it is infinite degrees worse if you're a woman or a member of a racialized, uh, racialized group. Um, or both, but, and we do need to fix that. I, I agree completely with Barry Sukman that, that we need to have the courage uh, to, to go after that uh, kind of behavior. So my, my plan today is not to cover what's being covered in the panels, in part because I can't, uh, the ethics commissioner won't let me, uh, because I, would, I was a sitting member of, of cabinet when C27 was, was introduced. Um, same, not quite true for the, uh, the, hate, the hate speech bill, but um, I can't say anything about that either. Um, I did get a great deal of, of AI experience when I was at ISAD, when I was the parliamentary secretary, and a number of you will remember. We were laying out the, we were laying out the groundwork for the pan-Canadian AI strategy. Uh, working with CIFAR, and, and uh, I enjoyed that time, and in fact, I had visited this place uh, during that time. I'm happy to, again, happy that I can be back. Generally speaking, whoops, not that. Generally speaking, I'm an AI optimist, and so I put up Orly Lobel's picture in her book, The Equality, her wonderful book, The Equality Machine. Uh, the, uh, Lior had, had mentioned his optimism as well. I, th I think I joined that group in the sense that we have this capacity through this technology to do wonderful things for human beings. And we have to seize that challenge by understanding what makes us human and where we can augment that, uh, that particular, uh, those particular qualities through machine learning, through artificial intelligence. Um, I'm cognizant, however, of very serious challenges, and Yeshua Bengio, uh, uh, Jeffrey Hinton, uh, they have pointed out how all of this might unravel. And so we do need to have a serious dose of realism um, with respect to how we move forward, and I think that points us, obviously, towards regulation. I think it points us as academic experts, as tech experts, um, as social theorists, uh, to play a role in that shaping uh, of, of this as we move forward. We need to develop those guardrails. We need to develop it moving together. But the horse has left the barn. There, there, there really isn't, uh, there isn't, isn't a way to go back. And so we have to move forward. We have to move forward together cautiously, flexibly, nimbly, quickly, uh, in order that, that we prevent the kinds of scenarios that that Yeshua Bengio and Jeffrey Hinton uh, are, are pointing towards. So I do believe governance is necessary. 
a number of us have lived through this. Uh, this was alluded to uh, by a number of panelists. I think, Susan, you may have alluded to it. We lived through it at the beginning of the internet um, and the beginning of copyright. Um, the same kinds of questions. Do we regulate? Do we not regulate? And in law faculties, we were saying, should we have a separate internet law course, or do we put the internet in every single course? And of course, the answer was probably a bit of both um, at the end of the day. And Bob, you answered my, the question. I, uh, Bill, you answered the question I would have asked on your panel, which is, are, will social norms fill in uh, if there's a gap between legislation and, and practice? And the answer is yes as they did with music and music sampling. That could happen here too, but let's be cognizant that I think there's a lot more at stake here. With respect to music, it was money, and I appreciate money is important, but uh, with respect to artificial intelligence, there's a whole lot more at stake, uh, and so we need, to, we need to be nimble, we need to move quickly. Um, I'm not going to talk about Ida because I can't. Um, although I would recognize that there are some meaningful critiques that are being advanced um, by people in this room and others, and we, we do need to continue that. Uh. What I'm going to talk about is my experience. My experience in government. Um, am I behind? No, that's it. My experience in government. Whoops, not that one. And it is my experience, it, it may not be representative, there are other people from government in this room. My thesis is the Canadian government, in line with what I've just said, needs to get a whole lot better, a whole lot quicker in the face of artificial intelligence. In terms of understanding how artificial intelligence works, the impacts that it will have, the complexity uh, that it, it uh, it engenders and using, understanding that complexity, understanding that it will touch on virtually every aspect of our public and private selves and then create, uh, and, and create appropriate rules. That's perfect as a cue. Um, our, our structures, I think, are too rigid. I think we're trying to regulate, our structures of government are too rigid. I think we're trying to regulate 21st century concepts with 19th century structures. Um, hence my, whoops. Hence my picture of Laurier is what, the one I want. There we are. <laughs> Turn of the century, great prime minister, but that's about where we are in terms of ministries and departments and, and, and the way our particular variant of the Westminster system is configured in Canada. And I think it needs to change. I think it needs to be more nimble. Let me tell you a cautionary tale. Back in 2016, so I got elected late 2015. Back in 2016, I was a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed MP. I was also a parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Trade. And so I had an inside look at, at a, a very dynamic minister, Christia Freeland, but also had a, had a good working relationship with other, with other ministers and ministries, uh, Minister Baines in particular, um, in, uh, in um, I said and, and Minister Joly in Heritage. I was interested, becoming a, a, because of my past as an IP professor in technology, I, I was interested in the internet, I was interested in, in emerging things like blockchain, artificial intelligence, uh, crypto, we called it machine learning back then, artificial intelligence, uh, quantum, computing, cybersecurity. And in that moment, looking at those ministries, I thought, we're, we're not, I don't think we're seizing the fact that this is important and we need to be thinking about this now. I didn't see one minister or one ministry or one department that had a handle on it. I saw, I saw, I saw the Privy Council office, I saw ISET, I saw finance, I saw heritage, treasury board, public safety, they all had they all had bits of it. Justice had bits of it. Um, and as I said, as, as the PS in trade, I, I had a bit of an inside view. Worse, it seemed to me to be siloed, that not only were bits being done in different ministries, but there weren't good lines of communication that were either horizontal or tangential or, or cross-cutting in some way, shape, or form. And this was all being exacerbated by the rate of change. 
So I thought, okay, let me try to think of how I might help. So I, I floated an idea of a rapid innovation office, four to five, six people, with a rapid innovation officer modeled to some extent on the chief science officer that, that we currently have. And in order to try to get the various departments and ministries to talk to each other and to coordinate, coordinate policy. Um, I, I had been there long enough to have understood that no minister or no deputy minister will, will readily give up power in their own, their own realm, right? The, the minister is, is, is the king or the queen and the, the deputy is, is the, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the intent, the intendant, as we used to say in, in New France, right, um, who, who control the, the, the department, they're not going to give anything up, especially on sexy files. So I just wanted to create something that would allow people to talk to each other and coordinate, coordinate the exchange of information. Um, floated it. A few people in PMO were listening. I managed to get meetings with a few people in PCO. Uh, there were people who seemed genuinely interested. Um, it fell flat completely. Uh, by the time I got, uh, I got named parliamentary secretary to the Minister of, of uh, um, Innovation, Science and Economic Development uh, in 2017, this idea was dead. Um, and I think it died because of ministers. And these, you know, they're they were my colleagues, but I think it died because of ministers, uh, possibly, possibly deputies, notwithstanding sincere efforts on the part of a few people, notwithstanding the fact that there were innovation tiger teams and, and such, but it failed. And failure is instructive. Uh, it instructed, I don't bear any grudges, uh, failure is instructive. The, I couldn't get buy-in from ministers and it couldn't work. And I think the lesson to me was that the institutions are still fairly rigid. And if we're going to get institutional change, we're going to have to get that kind of change from the very top of the, of the political order. Like the, the, the decision's gonna have to come from the, from the, uh, from the top. Um, Artificial intelligence, we've seen already in the panels and we know from experience and we're going to see in future panels, is, is complex. And I think we're coming to the recognition that governments will have to play some role uh, in the regulation of artificial intelligence, whether it is a light hand or a heavy hand is something that, that, that we, we can d disagree upon. But because of what's at stake, issues like data governance, um, data control, access to data, monetization, privacy, issues like con uh, concentration, government, impact, government responses to the impact of AI, the social impact of AI, especially when it's disruptive. Um, are, we, are we going to a three-day work week? Are we, are we uh, going to see whole swaths of, of parts of industries eliminated? Uh, someone in a law firm said, all the associates are going to be wiped out because all they're, all they're doing is this very low-level kind of due diligence that could easily be done by artificial intelligence. I don't know. I don't know those answers. I don't pretend to know those answers. But I do know that there's a complexity there. And there's the, the ethical issues, obviously, and the equity issues that, again, we've seen this morning in the panel. I don't, I don't need to go uh, further on. How, how resources are distributed and whether the digital divide will become exacerbated by artificial intelligence. So government needs to get it better and needs to get it better quickly. And I think, therefore, based on, on my experience, we need to rethink the categories that we have in government. We need to rethink the ministries in government, the structure of government. If you were starting from scratch today, 21st century, and putting together a cabinet, you wouldn't come up with the categories that we have now. It's, it's, it's simply true. Um, and again, I'm not, not making negative comments on any, any one minister or ministry. Um, it is simply the case that we, we need to make some changes. So I do have some specific, um, some specific more functionalist uh, 
suggestions that we might think about uh, with respect to government. The first is, as I said, it's too big. It, it used to be Industry Canada, became Innovation, Science, and Economic Development. And it, it, it simply has too much to do. We were working reasonably well, reasonably hard uh, under Minister Baines. But then a pandemic hit. Then a pandemic hit when, when Minister Champagne was the minister. And the climate crisis became exacerbated really at the same time. And, and I said had to pivot to laying the foundations for the battery economy, uh, the, the critical minerals development, and, and a, a transformation of the car economy in central Canada, because it had to. I, I honestly can't see another option there at this stage. In the long term, maybe. In the long term, maybe their hydrogen or other things might be possible. Reducing our, our uh, reliance on automobiles will be completely and utterly necessary. I get that. But at this stage, the government had to pivot. And when it pivoted there, I would argue that it didn't have time anymore to address a lot of the issues that we're talking about today. And so, simply too big. Let's have a Minister of Industry figure out a way to divide it. Let's have a Minister of Innovation. The other thing about the process is that everything filters upward through the Minister and to the Minister of Finance and the Prime Minister. And if there's too much in the bailiwick of one minister, there are important things that won't get to the top because they will, be, they will have been filtered out beforehand. Um, another way to think about it is Mark sean has got too much to do. <laughs> and and, 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 and has, as good as he is at it, and he is, and I, and I thank Mark for his work, uh, it is simply the case that it's, it's a wide swath and it might be better to, to break that down. Same is true with, with you know, the, the internet is something that, that didn't exist when, when the Heritage Department was conceived. And even telecommunications, to the extent that we have telecommunications now, is, wasn't something that was conceived when the Heritage Department was conceived. And there's, there's, room, there, there's room there too to, to break that down. There are some non-obvious ones. Public safety. Public safety is massive. Um, and with questions like cybersecurity, for example, that are, that are critically important, um, the regulation of, of, of online hatred um, and, and uh, disinformation, all of that critically important. Public safety has to deal, uh, well, we, we have separated natural disasters away from public safety, which was a good thing, but there, there is the whole question of national security, there are questions of police forces, there are, are questions of prisons, there are questions of borders, all of that under one ministry. And, and these, these ministries are simply too big. There are others, I think, that are underserved. I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be critical, but we need, to, we need to break those down. Let's go back to having the old Solicitor General taking care of prisons borders and, and police forces, and then have a public safety minister looking at these other, these other issues. That's one way to do it, but there are other ways to do it. I'm just saying we need to think about this, and we need to think about this uh, quickly. Other configurations, certainly possible. I recognize the government has moved in, in some ways. There's a minister for digital services now, Terry Beach, and, and I think that's a good step forward. I think that we, we should go back to having ministers of state um, where you have a, a sort of single purpose ministry uh, with a smaller scope, a smaller mandate. And I think we would move, we would move more rapidly in certain areas if we, if we went back to that. I think there needs to be more investment in, in, in government bodies. Um, again, as good as Mark Sean is, he could have more people working with him and, and have more resources. I, it, I appreciate resources are always scarce, 
I appreciate they're always difficult, but sometimes you have to make uh, difficult choices. And I think in this case, uh, we need to be investing uh, in the human resources um, necessary for us to have the capacity to deliver uh, good governance. I want to say something perhaps a little more controversial. There's a challenge with consultants, but it's not the challenge that you read about in the papers. Yes, the, the, the fact that there are abuses of the system uh, by people within the system and, and in some cases by consultants within the system, that's serious and that, and that kind of behavior needs to be weeded out and punished. But there's a bigger problem with consultants that, that has gone largely unnoticed. Um, it, it began as a shift under Prime Minister Harper and it continued, uh, continued under our government to farm out a lot of work to consultants. It was done, I think, to, to get rid of uh, pension obligations uh, and, and to reduce the overall cost and footprint of government. But what it does is it farms out expertise, it farms out institutional memory. And we reach a point where we don't have the capacity to act anymore because the institutional memory no longer resides in the, in the professional civil service. It is particularly problematic in the face of AI because it is such a highly specialized set of skills, highly specialized knowledge, that not having the requisite capacity in government is, is very, very dangerous. And so we need to, we need to rethink this. This is a, this is a phenomenon that Mariana Mazzucato, who is, a, who is an economist, um, Italian-American economist, uh, currently at, at, I believe, UCL, University College London, has identified in the British context, uh, again, similar kind of civil service. Uh, she's the only person I've seen so far in writing who has, who has identified this phenomenon of, of farming out to consultants. We need to bring that back. Even if, it, even if it costs us money. And think of the vulnerability in a period, if we move into a period of budget cuts, which if, you know, reading the papers, I, I understand is coming. Um, if, if the first people to get cut are consultants, how many of those consultants will leave with institutional memory or specialized knowledge? And how many of, of those people will actually reduce our capacity to deal with AI, other phenomena as, as we move forward. We need to have less reliance on consultants. We need to bring that back in, and we need to bring the institutional memory uh, back in. Otherwise, we, we, risk, uh, we risk all of this. Now, Clerk, uh, Clerk John Hannaford, um, newly named Clerk of the Privy Council Office, he has begun cross-cutting initiatives. This is a good, this is a good, a, a very good thing. Um, getting deputy ministers and, and uh, assistant deputy ministers on different kinds of cross-cutting uh, initiatives so that departments actually begin to talk to each other. That's a very, very good step. Other initiatives are possible. Maybe my idea is, uh, is still useful. Those, those kinds of flexible teams that work um, that work in the interstices uh, between ministers and ministries. Coordinating and ranking ministerial mandate letters. So as a minister, I got a mandate letter. And I worked diligently to try to get everything done. In fact, my, my, my joke was this summer, I finished, almost finished a four-year mandate letter in two years, um, which was substantively true. Um, Every other minister gets those too. And sometimes the parts where you find difficulty are where your mandate, you're supposed to be working with another minister on another project. And sometimes the difficulty comes where it's not your priority and it's the other minister's priority. And there, the prime minister's office has to step in and, and have a role in, in that kind of coordination. 
um, sometimes that breaks down. And so we need to have better coordination of those kinds of, 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 of mandates and priorities, particularly when it comes to something like AI. That's going to have so many cross-cutting uh, implications across so many ministries. That would also allow us to be, uh, to be more nimble, too, as we, as we move forward. Clearly, we need better communication, and a better communication not just of, of substance, but of priorities and, and policies. And certainly, we need to do more in-house. On a larger level, we as a country need to prioritize our goals and, and invest in the kinds of resources accordingly in all the structures, government and, and non-government, in order to get people in the right places and spaces in order to move uh, uh, society, businesses, uh, communities forward. And I would argue that it's much harder to do right now because I think those structures are misaligned. The, yeah, okay, I'm almost there. So most of the challenges that I have mentioned in this, in this experience of governance have not been AI specific, but the sensitivity, like what I'm trying to convey to you is the sensitivity of artificial intelligence and of, of many of these, these high tech issues uh, are such that the deficiencies that I've pointed out are actually exacerbated. And so we need, uh, we need to move, I think, uh, forward quickly, relying on, uh, relying on on people who are in this room uh, to comment and, and to push uh, the, the discussion forward. So while we discuss AI today and, and, uh, and further down the road, we also have to pay attention to these issues of structure, to pay attention to issues of how decisions are made and how policies, policy formation is done, um, and on the administration of programming after that policy uh, comes out. Maybe AI can help here. Again, I'm, I still uh, but first, we need to fix, I would say, our model, improve our house, and then uh, move from there. So with that, I thank you. Parts, two parts to my answer. Thank you for the question. It's a great question. Two parts to my answer. The first is, based on what I, I said in my speech, I think there has to be greater coordination between ISED and global affairs. Um, if ISED is too big, global affairs, it, by necessity, is very big, right? It, 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 covers, it covers a lot of terrain. And so there has to be, uh, and across government, there has to be a greater um, degree of attention paid and a greater degree of coordination in terms of the, in terms of the policy. With respect to the substance of the policy, my own, my, again, my own personal view, and, and it, it echoes something uh, that Barry said earlier, Canada has to find its space, right? 
we're not the United States, we're not the European Union. That being said, we have three of the, of the, of the groundbreaking uh, artificial intelligence leaders in the world and teams around them in, in, in Montreal, Toronto, and, and Edmonton. Um, we have strengths. Basic research is one of our strengths. We can find a way to play to those strengths uh, at the international level. It, it may very well be AI and ethics. It may very well be AI and equity, as, as we pointed out. We certainly, um, one of the things I'm most proud of as Minister of Justice was, was uh, shepherding the adoption of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People into Canadian law, and then developing an action plan. That action plan touches on structures of governance. On the ground, we can, we can put that together, and reconciliation is another place in which the world is looking at Canada as an example. We haven't always been great. It's been tragic. But we are moving in the right direction. And uh, that's another place where we, we are, I think, have a leadership role to play. So the basic point is understand our limitations, understand our strengths, and let's play to our strengths, and let's play to those strengths at an international level. Thank you. Well, I think this is really time to say thank you to you um, for your incredible and profound observations. Given the complex complexity of the challenges that we face, we really need to think about the very structures that are trying to fix those. And if they're antiquated, um, then uh, we need to get better, quicker, and faster, right? So maybe that rapid innovation office is something that will come to fruition, maybe not in your time in Ottawa, but some other time in the not so distant future. So with that, thank you, thank you David. Thank you.